Hello, people of YouTube. Crap on the lens. Today, I just want to go over something about the Mavic Pro and the Mavic Air. This is the emergency shutoff. This is not something I would really recommend you do all the time, but it's good to know that these drones are capable of this. Now, if you didn't know, you can fly the Mavic Air and the Mavic Pro, this is the Pro controller, without your phone. Today, I'm not hooking up my phone, I'm just gonna quickly launch them and show you guys this emergency shutoff procedure. <laughs> to start your Mavic Pro without anything underneath it, it's the same thing, you just put them sticks together, and that's it. Let me show you that again real quick for those who missed it. Now, there's a debate online whether that's bad for the motors or not. As you can see, they just quickly speed up and then turn off. That compared to landing it with the protection sensors on is pretty minimal. Now that is not the best way, in my opinion, to hand catch your Mavic Pro or your Mavic Air. It is definitely a way you can do it if you're having issues and you can't get it to land and you're somewhere where you aren't capable of landing and you just need to quickly grab it and get it turned off. It's probably more so if you crash and it turns upside down and it's sort of out of control. The drone shouldn't be running if it's upside down hitting the ground or hitting a child or a dog or who knows what it could hit. So it turns itself off. It is something that you can take advantage of if necessary, but I am working on another video right now with the Mavic Air to show the best way, in my opinion, to hand catch that safely. Safely being the key word. Don't let it hit your eyeballs. And just so you know, it works in every direction. Once it hits about 50%, it just shuts off. Works with the Mavic Air too. As cool as it is that these sticks aren't on the controller, it's also sort of a pain in my ass. Another thing I sort of miss, which I will be going over more detailed soon in a whole nother Mavic Air video that I'm working on. The lack of the screen, the ISO wheel, and the little thumbstick. Now if you haven't used those, you won't miss them. With the sensors on, you do have to sort of grab it quick, otherwise it will just sort of go up on its own to try to avoid your hand. So like I said, you gotta sort of be quick or it wants to go up on its own. And I do not recommend this as the best way to hand catch your Mavic Air or Pro, especially if you have your sensors on. That's a whole nother video. If you haven't seen it already, I have gone over five ways to hand catch your Mavic Pro, which I will link right up there. And if you stay tuned, click like, subscribe to the channel. I am working on what I feel after a year and a half of flying these particular brand drones, what I feel is the best and safest way to hand catch these so you don't chop up your fingers and you don't hurt yourself because there are people out there who try and then they hurt themselves. And if you're not comfortable, God, please do not try this. If you're confident and you're comfortable, the odds of you hurting yourself are very minimal because it's actually incredibly easy to do this. So stay tuned, subscribe, and click that little bell icon right over there, and I'll catch you next time. It's starting to snow, so I gotta get out of here.
were speaking about earlier, I mentioned that there's a little bit of a debate going on online whether this ruins your motors or not. These motors are a little different than the motors on RC cars and things that like were from 20 years ago. They have brushless motors in them now. It takes a lot more to mess those up. You don't have to spin them all the time like you used to back in the day. So the debate is, does it mess up your motors? or does it just mess up your bearings, or does it really not put that much more of a strain on it all? Like I said before, this is not the way I suggest you do this, but it is something you can do. I am really curious what you guys think about the debate, about the motors, about the uh, this particular emergency shutoff, and let me know in the comments. Am I insane for even showing you guys this feature? Are you insane for not using this feature? Do you prefer another method? Like one of the other ones I've mentioned in my other videos. You guys are great, so make sure you get onto each other's threads and have a civil discussion between each other as well on what you think about this. Does it destroy your motors? Does it destroy your bearings? Or does it do nothing at all? Thanks everyone, I hope you enjoyed the footage. And I'll see you next time.